Did you know that marbles were used at NASA? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? But surprisingly, it's true. You must be wondering how small marble can be helpful for a space company. Watch the video until the end to learn about this secret regarding marbles and their history and the complete production process. From mixing the raw materials, cooling, annealing, inspecting, packaging, and shipping, every step is full of surprises and opens your imagination chamber. The history of glass marbles dates back thousands of years. The earliest known marbles were made of stone or clay and were found in archaeological sites in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and India. In the Middle Ages, glass marbles began to be produced in Europe, becoming increasingly popular as toys and gambling pieces. The first mass-produced glass marbles were made in Germany in the 1840s. Germany also has a record of making the world's largest marble. The marble is a 1,500-pound sphere, 681 kilograms. The invention of glass marble revolutionized marble production, making them more affordable and accessible to children. As a result, marbles became increasingly popular as toys and children from all over the world began to play with marbles. In the early 20th century, the game of marbles became a popular spectator sport, and organized tournaments were held in many countries like the United States and Germany. Over the years, players from Australia, Belgium, Canada, Estonia, Ireland, France, Germany, Japan, Netherlands, Wales, and the United States have participated alongside English teams. There are even professional marble players who compete in tournaments around the world. Some famous marble players include Colin Gardner, who plays for Yorkshire Meds, Chris Pample, who plays for Saxonia Globe Snippers, and Paul Smith, who plays for First MC Erzberger. The most famous marble game is Ring Top, played by shooting marbles at a ring. The revenue of toy marbles is difficult to quantify, as no single source tracks this data. However, there are a few estimates that give us a general idea of the size of the market. According to a report by Grandview Research, the global toy market was valued at $1.1 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow to $1.4 billion by 2028. This represents a compound annual growth rate of 3.5% from 2021 to 2028. In addition to the report by Grandview Research, a few other sources provide estimates of the revenue of toy marbles. For example, a report by Market Research Future estimates that the global toy marbles market will be worth $1.6 billion by 2027. This growth is being driven by the increasing popularity of marbles as a toy among children. As long as children continue to enjoy playing with marbles, the market for toy marbles will grow. You must be wondering how marbles are made. Let's delve deeper into the step-by-step -step process of how marbles are made. The raw materials used for marbles include sand, soda lime, silica, scrap glass, and cutlet. The primary component, sand, is essentially loose, granular particles of disintegrated rock. Soda lime is a chemical term for the mixture of calcium hydroxide and sodium or potassium hydroxide. It is a drying agent and absorbs carbon dioxide. Another compound used in marble manufacturing is silica a white or colorless crystalline found in agate, flint, quartz, and other rocks. The quality and consistency of the raw materials are crucial to producing high-quality marbles. Manufacturers carefully source and test the raw materials to meet specific purity and chemical composition standards. All the raw materials are mixed in a large furnace for 24 hours. The temperature of the furnace is typically around 2300 degrees Fahrenheit, 1260 degrees Celsius. The glass furnace used in marble production is typically fueled by natural gas, oil, or electricity. The furnace operates continuously to maintain a consistent temperature for 24 hours. The fusion of raw materials in the furnace results in a highly viscous glassy liquid known as the glass melt. Controlling the furnace temperature and the composition of the glass melt is critical for achieving the desired properties in the final marbles. The method of forming marbles can vary depending on the specific manufacturing process and the type of marble being produced. In the traditional glass blowing method, skilled artisans gather molten glass at the end of a blowpipe, shaping it with various tools while carefully rotating the pipe to create a spherical shape. Alternatively, in modern facilities, automated machines use rollers to form the marbles efficiently and precisely. The next step includes coloring the marbles. 
This step is optional and depends on the desired marble type. While clear marbles are famous, colored marbles add a vibrant touch to collections and games. Coloring the marbles involves adding specific metal oxides or organic pigments to the glass melt during the melting stage. Pigments or lakes are added to the color to get the desired marble. Pigments are solid and soluble colorants added to the glass mixture before it is melted, while lakes are colorants made by combining a pigment with a binder. Lakes are typically more transparent than pigments. In addition to colorants, other agents can also be used to give toy marbles their unique properties. For example, some marbles may contain metallic powders to give them a metallic finish. Other marbles may have fluorescent powders to make them glow in the dark. After shaping or coloring, the marbles are transferred to an annealing layer. The layer typically consists of a long, temperature-controlled tunnel through which the marbles slowly travel on a conveyor belt. The marbles are heated to their annealing temperature for an hour. The temperature is 968 degrees Fahrenheit, which is typically around 520 degrees Celsius. Then the marbles are cooled slowly at a rate of no more than 300 degrees Fahrenheit per hour which equals to 149 degrees Celsius. After that, the marbles cool to room temperature naturally. The marbles are then sent to polish. The polishing stage is a critical step to achieving the smooth, shiny surface that characterizes marbles. Depending on the manufacturing process, marbles can be polished in tumblers, rotary machines, or with specially designed polishing pads. The abrasive media such as sand, silicon carbide, or diamond dust gradually removes any surface imperfections and creates a lustrous finish on the marbles. After polishing, the marbles undergo meticulous inspection and sorting. Skilled workers or automated systems examine the marbles for any defects, such as air bubbles, surface irregularities, or inconsistent coloring. Marbles that meet the desired quality standards are classified into various grades based on size, color, clarity, and surface finish. The grading process ensures that marbles appear uniform and meet the manufacturer's specifications. The final step involves packaging the marbles for distribution and sale. Manufacturers package marbles in various ways, including small bags, decorative jars, or containers with nostalgic designs. Often, the packaging includes labels, branding, and safety information. In some cases, marbles are sold in sets or as part of games and activities. By following these detailed steps and maintaining strict quality control measures throughout the process, manufacturers produce marbles that are not only visually appealing, but also durable and suitable for various applications, from traditional marble games to artistic and decorative uses. Now, you must be wondering how marbles were used in NASA. They were actually used in NASA weather balloons in the past. They were used as ballast to keep the balloons stable in the atmosphere. The marbles would be released as the balloon ascended, which would help keep the balloon from floating away too quickly. Have you ever played with marbles as a child? Well, I certainly have. Do tell us your answers in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this episode. Hit like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.